much. Hi, welcome. Uh, I'm Jason Barner. This is Larry Kim. I'm sure everybody knows who Larry is. Uh, I'm kind of new to the scene, so I'm introducing myself. Lovely to meet you, Larry. Uh, it's great to do something with you finally, Jason. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, first thing I did when somebody said, or if Anton said, uh, you're going to be on screen with Larry Kim. First thing I did, because my speciality is brand SERPs and personal brand SERPs, what comes up when I search your name? And I search your name, and it's really impressive. <laughs> <laughs> no, you've done a great job. Uh, the orange color in the background comes up all the time, and I think that's a, a um, great piece of branding you've done there. You know, it's funny. It's like an old photo from like four years ago, and I just can't change it because I don't have access to that wall anymore. <laughs> but I, I now associate orange with Larry Kim, and I think that, <laughs> that's wonderful. The other thing I know is you've got, your Twitter account comes up top. You're obviously very, very active on Twitter. Uh, it's a kind of a weakness, yeah. <laughs> it's like a waste you, of time. <laughs> you love Twitter. Uh, yeah, you know, it's <laughs> I, 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 it, it's great. Like, um, it just it's just a really great community. You know? so. Yeah, I, I I really like it because it's a mixture of friendly, fun, and informative. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, uh, and and then on the right hand side we've got your knowledge panel, so Google's understood who you are, um, and Mobile Monkey comes up. So Mobile Monkey is the reference for you, which means you control your own presence in the knowledge graph, which is amazing. Uh, you know, I'm not. I don't know how that works, but uh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. In, in that case, you don't know how it works, but you're actually very good at it. And, and when I look at the list, you've got LinkedIn, Inc.com, Medium.com, which is something you're going to talk about later on with the slide deck, how you got so many views on Medium, Search Engine Journal, Facebook, Mark Growth, and Think Growth. Uh, all very big names. Larry King, you've nailed it, man. <laughs> okay, thanks, Jason. Um, that's that. You made my day. <laughs> and the other thing is unicorns. You love unicorns. Um, when I think of unicorns, I think of Despicable Me with the little girl who sings unicorns. Is that your view? Or is it um, you know, uh, I apologize. Some unicorns have really jumped the shark. Like they've gotten a little <laughs> crazy in the last, you know, three, four, five years. But I just want to say uh, I've been a fan of unicorns, you know, for a long, long time, like way before like My Little Pony and, and all this stuff. And um, you know, I actually think that I may have had something to do with helping popularize unicorns over the last few years. So, like, I am the original unicorn lover, and uh, you know, don't hate me because they've gotten so popular now. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's sort of my story. So. Yeah, being a precursor is difficult. I understand. I used <laughs> to wear old socks when I was a punk as a kid. And now everybody's doing it, and I feel a little bit the same. But I, I think my level is a little bit lower than yours. You've nailed the unicorn universe. You know, people send me unicorns from all over the world, so that's kind of funny. Like they, they whenever, whenever they think of, whenever they find a unicorn stationary or a stapler, or, or you know, they just, they just send it to my office. It's, it's, and there's a like hundreds of of, of uh, unicorns there, so it's really fun. Brilliant. So unicorns do exist. They exist all over the world, and we have unicorns in Facebook ads. And you're going to tell us all about it. I'm really keen. Off yeah, you go, man. Uh, awesome. Well, thanks, Jason, and uh, thanks everyone for joining me today. I'm going to be talking about a topic that is super de near and dear to my heart, and that is Facebook advertising hacks and you know crazy ideas that you can use uh, for your own campaigns next year. Uh, just briefly introducing myself. I'm from Canada, from a kind of a place that's called Winnipeg. It's famous for being colder than Mars for most of the year. Um, I'm slightly obsessed with unicorns. Um, there's over 200 unicorns in this deck, I'm gonna just warn you. Uh, and uh, I'm kind of famous for starting a company called Wordstream that was about 10 years ago. Uh, I, I started this company all, all by myself in a Panera Bread 
uh, that's got, it gets like a bakery uh, that offered free Wi-Fi and free Diet Coke refills. Uh, and also no, like it was a free office space basically. Um, and the, the company grew to over 300 people uh, today managing about a billion dollars of ad spend for tens of thousands of customers worldwide and employing over 300 people. So we did move out of the, 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 the Panera Bread. Uh, it was a really exciting um, journey for me. It was my first startup, uh, starting from literally nothing and growing to uh, about 55 million in, in revenues last year, or 16 million in earnings. Uh, and um, the, the company was acquired last year by Gannett for $150 million. Um, and which is, you know, that's a pretty good um, outcome if you consider that I only raised about $20 million in, in, um, in, in venture funding. Uh, and, 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 you know, if people wonder like, what's that like? Uh, I honestly, it's, it's a relief because like I'm an, in the marketing industry and I talk about like how to grow your business and stuff like this. And it would have been totally, totally embarrassing if, if, uh, if, if it was a total failure or something like that. Uh, <laughs> just a joke. Um, I have a family, uh, you know, two boys, age one and five, uh, that's Julian and Oliver right there. And my beautiful wife, Kaylee, she's a, uh, like a heart surgeon. Um, and um, yeah, that's enough about me. Let's go talk about why you're here. Uh, that is our top seven ad hacks for 2020. And I promise you this will be the greatest Facebook ad uh, webinar you've ever attended because the way I define hacks is not like stupid, obvious things. I'm not gonna say like, oh, hey guys, you gotta you know test ads uh, <laughs> and that's the hack. <laughs> No, no, guys, that's not a hack. Uh, that, that's just common sense. You, you see what I'm saying? Uh, so what I define a hack is uh, it's, it's sort of like a non-obvious loophole. That is, it's not illegal, okay? Um, it's totally legal. And, and if you do it in this kind of crazy way, you can potentially generate super high impact stuff. And the way that I've done this today is I made it very easy for you to copy. So you can copy all these uh, campaigns uh, you know, in your own things. And by the way, all the slides that you're looking at today, you can get them yourself. It's bit.ly slash SEMrush dash Larry. Okay. All right. So here's the problem guys, Facebook ads, you know, they used to be so amazing. And I'm like, I fell in love with them like seven or eight years ago and they were the, they were incredible. You could target anything, anybody. And, and, uh, you know, the, the main problem is that the, the prices have gone up a lot. So like, uh, you know, audiences that I used to target here in the U.S. that were around a dollar, uh, you know, it's it's more like a hundred dollars per CPM, uh, just in the last six years, and um, you know that that's a problem because every one percent increase in in cost per click and CPM is a one percent decrease in the return on investment, uh, and 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 the prices are going up, you know, twenty thirty percent per quarter, and so basically, um, if you're if you're using last year's ad strategies, I'm telling you, it's not going to work. Uh, you know, you're just losing money probably, and and um, it's time to rethink that strategy. Uh, and so, I wanted to give you uh, my top favorite strategies that I use uh, for my own campaigns. All of these ide the ideas I've originated myself, like I didn't read somewhere else. These are just unusual loopholes that I have discovered uh, as I am just running these Facebook campaigns for fun. All right. And so, my number seven Facebook ad hack is called the inverted unicorn ad hack. Uh, the inverted unicorn ad targeting method. Uh, and then this is a pretty crazy one. Um, you know, sometimes uh, it's easier to describe. Uh, oh, by the way, don't worry if you've never heard of the inverted unicorn. This is just my own terminology. I just name things after different types of unicorns, okay? Um, so best way to describe the inverted unicorn ad targeting method is to give you an example, all right? So this is a crazy ad, a real ad on Facebook, and it says, Life, it's a t-shirt it's a offer. It says, life took me to England, but I'll always be an Arizona girl. <laughs> and if you look at this t-shirt, uh, it has a picture of England. Uh, and then in the middle, that's actually the state of Arizona. Um, so this is an incredible ad. Look at the, look at the people who are, who are commenting on this ad. <laughs> Sherry Bell says, how many Arizonans live in England? <laughs> and, and Mimi Drake is freaking out. She's saying, um, you know, is my phone listening to me? This is creepy. Um, so the question is how, how are these crazy ads that, that provoke such an emotional response and really stop your, you, you dead in your tracks and, and get your attention? Like, how is this possible? And believe it or not, um, they're not, they're not using any crazy uh, custom audiences. They're not using any crazy third-party data. This is all legitimate, you know, 
Facebook targeting. Uh, they're just using it in a different way from the way that you're using uh, Facebook ads. And I, let, let me let me describe to you kind of the story here. And so basically the way that this came my way was that the the anchor, the, the, the news anchor of CNN wrote me an email the other day and she was just asking me like, hey, I used to, you know, uh, live in Arizona, but then I then I worked in Washington D.C. for 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 um, for uh, CNN for for twelve years. Okay, and then I moved to to the U.K. and she's like, "How the heck is this Facebook know that I lived in 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 uh, in Arizona twelve years ago?" All right, uh, and, and it wasn't that hard. Um, let, you know, a lot of you. Um, I'm just curious how many of you can figure this out. Um, so Facebook, uh, you know, everyone knows you can target by geography. So that's like, you know, you can target women who live in England. Uh, and some of, our, of you might know that there's a way of targeting a, a behavior called recently moved. Okay. So that's kind of interesting, but it's not the full story. So there's two really clever things that are happening in the inverted unicorn ad targeting method. The first thing that they're doing is they're targeting an uncorrelated interest. So what they're doing is they're saying, people who live in England who are women who recently moved and who happen to like local businesses such as high schools or sports teams or universities that are located in the state of Arizona. So, so what they're doing is, you know, that doesn't mean that they lived in Arizona, but if you combine the fact that they now live in England and they recently moved, it's it's not a bad bet. It's not a bad guess to say that that's where they originated from. Okay, uh, so what they're doing is they're they're kind of making a guess. Okay, uh, and and the second thing that they're doing is they're kind of letting the the uh, the the, uh, the reader, the consumer of this ad. Uh, know that we're making this guess ab about you, okay? Uh, and they're reflecting that knowledge back in, in, in sort of a really creepy ad. And, and um, so this, th this is really genius, I think, uh, because it really strikes uh, to, the, to the core of fundamental Facebook ad targeting principles, all right? So conventional wisdom in Facebook ad, ad targeting says you're supposed to target related interests, okay? But what the inverted unicorn is saying is that you should go after unre unrelated interests. Like what's the relationship between people who live live in England, who recently moved and who happen to like some local bar, you know, in, in, in Arizona, in some city in Arizona, like these are totally unrelated, right? Um, and so uh, just, just to give you an example of what I'm targeting, about, uh, what I'm talking about between related and unrelated interests, um, so you have, um, you know, just say you're like SCM Rush or say you're like Mobile Monkey, that's my company and we're trying to sell marketing software to marketers like you, okay? So the conventional wisdom says, well, why don't we look for people who have certain interests like uh, interested in MailChimp or interested in email marketing or people who like constant contact. And, and, then, and then we kind of draw that circle and then we say, well, why don't we narrow down that circle with additional kind of cr demographics like that they have a, a, a job title that has something related to marketing, okay? so. That's sort of how you target ads, you know, up until today. Like it's, you know, when you click this little button here, see that button that says suggestions, okay? What it's suggesting is it's suggesting related interests. So it's gonna say like people who like SEM Rush or people who like, you know, uh, it, it, content marketing or, or SEO. Like it, it's gonna keep suggesting re related interests, okay? And what I'm saying is that that's the old way of doing it. The new way of doing it is you should come up with crazy like, kooky, not unrelated examples. Um, so um, here, here's an example of, 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 of inverted unicorn ad targeting. Um, so rather than just like say, say we're trying to sell marketing software here, rather than tar targeting people who like MailChimp or HubSpot or SEM Rush, um, we're gonna overlay that interest, like people who like marketing with people who like uh, Game of Thrones, like people who like the Sansa Stark you know, fan page or the Jon Snow fan page, or, you know, these are very niche web, uh, Facebook likes. Uh, and so these people who, who like these pages uh, are super fans of Game of Thrones. Okay. So the question is, what's the relationship between people who like Game of Thrones and people who like marketing, email marketing? Nothing. They're, they're totally unrelated. There's, you know, they are totally uncorrelated. Uh, and so nevertheless, I'm saying that that is a valid 
targeting segment. Why? So that you can create very clever ads that don't just speak to one of their interests, email marketing, but speaks to simultaneously to two or three or four of their interests, thereby really stopping them cold and thinking like, wow, this, this ad is like really just for me or, or, or really speaks my, my interests. Uh, so this, this is an example of, of uh, you know, an email marketing company using kind of uh, you know, Games of Thrones e, e kind of imagery, and and the result is incredible. Uh, so so you can see here the the ad buy uh, it generates a CPM of a dollar thirty six, which is kind of like the prices that I was seeing you know five or six years ago. Now it's closer to a hundred dollars, guys. Uh, and the reason why this is the case is because you can um, you know get, raise the engagement rates, uh, which you know the, the ad auction kind of. You know, if, if people are clicking on this thing like crazy, Facebook likes to show ads that people like to engage with, and that, it's that's it's that simple. Um, so that was one example, but believe it or not, um, the problem with that example is that Game of Thrones isn't a niche interest. It's like so globally popular that like, you know, I don't know, maybe like 20% of the world has heard of Game of Thrones, you know, and, and watches it, you know what I mean? So like, it's not, it's not so crazy, like saying, like, "Hey, I used to be a, you know, uh, you know, I, 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 live in England, but I'm always an Arizona girl at heart." You, you see, I'm saying, like, that's, that's crazy. Uh, so the, the 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 thing about this inverted unicorn targeting method is it works better with more increasingly niche, uh, niche targeting. Okay, so like. Here's an example of, of a, a story that I, po I published the other day. Uh, it was a blog post that I wrote about, about fake news and fake ads on Facebook and how you can use it to uh, influence elections. Okay, so I basically wrote an article about this topic and um, it was just a, a kind of a research interest that I was interested in, in learning about. Uh, and, and um, you know, I. I'm not making any money off of this. It's just a, a stupid blog post. So, but I did want to share the share the audio. I did want to share my blog post, uh, and so I spent about fifty dollars promoting the article on on Facebook ads, and it generated uh, with a fifty dollar ad spend one point three thousand one point three thousand likes, one hundred and twenty thousand reach, um, you know, two hundred thirty six thirty five shares, sixty eight comments, and again, this is all for fifty dollars. And so the question is, how on earth does a $50 ad spend go this far? And the answer is the inverted unicorn. So the, the, the key to the success of this ad campaign is the image. In that image um, is a guy named Senator Vrenak of the Romulan Star Empire. Okay, so this is a very obscure character who only showed up in one episode of Star Trek IX, which is an obscure you know, Star Trek series. It wasn't even that popular. Uh, and, and this is one episode of a, a fairly unpopular show that, that aired like, you know, 20 years ago. OK, I, I just happen to remember this uh, th this episode. It was about, you know, I'm kind of dating myself. It was about fake news. OK, so I just thought, well, why don't I just use that funny image? OK, and so when when I was targeting this ad, I thought the people who would want to watch this to read this article would be liberals because they were so mad about the election and they want someone to blame and they want to say like oh see it was the russians and facebook is to blame you know it's so like i thought that liberals would be interested in reading my article on fake news um the problem was that there was like when i added liberals in the targeting method like in, in facebook ads there was 55 million of them you see what i'm saying and and i only had like 50 dollars to spend so like, why on earth would you target 55 million people with $50? That's crazy. So I overlaid this crazy, you know, obscure interest of people who also like Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Uh, and that kind of cut down the audience to like, you know, tens of thousands of people instead of millions of people. And I know that was the reason why this worked, uh, because if you look at the comments on the ads, it's crazy. Like Mike Alton, he's saying, Ha ha ha, I love that scene from DS9. What a great tie-in. <laughs> what? And then Andrew, uh, he replies to Michael saying, um, how many people do you even think know what DS9 means? Like he's totally in disbelief that such a such an obscure image is, is generating so much, so much engagement. But what Andrew doesn't understand is that the reason the reason why he's seeing this ad is because he knows what it means. You see what I'm saying? So like the more niche, the more obscure kind of 
you know, interests that you can bring into this ad, the more successful this targeting method is. So like, you know, if you're selling, you know, basket weaving, uh, you know, kits, then, you know, target people who also like Metallica. It's, that's some like washed up band from the from rock band from the eighties and, 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 and kind of come up with a clever thing that speaks to both of those interests. And that is such an unusual combination that it, it will definitely get their attention. You can see here, everyone is screaming like, oh, this is so funny. Okay. Um, so in summary, the way that you're doing a Facebook ad targeting is probably wrong. You're probably doing it the old way of, of targeting related interests. Um, but I, what I'm trying to tell you is that there's also a lot of interest and interesting kooky ad strategies that you can try if you decide to go against the flow and just target unrelated interests. Uh, this can re re result in totally ridiculous targeting scenarios as the examples I've shown you today. It, ha it works because it makes, you know, very boring ads, you know, it, you know, remarkably interesting by simultaneously appealing to multiple interests. Um, you know, so this is a really interesting tactic if you're selling like, I don't know, like office stationery or something that's really boring, you know, like uh, you, you could actually make it interesting. Uh, and of course, um, the strategy is really valuable for cutting down large audiences. So like if your budget is is small in comparison to the size of, of your of your audience, then just you, you need to cut down that audience size. Uh, use use inverted unicorn. Um, just uh, really quickly, Larry. Sorry, uh, I, I said I'd let you talk all the way through, but a couple of things just occurred to me. One of which is the word huge. I think we forget what a phenomenally large audience Facebook has, and that we can dig down, dig down. We still find one thousand three hundred people to like something terribly niche like that. That's right. That's right. So that's your, I think it's actually the only way to make money these days because the prices are so high. Um, all right. So um, um, sorry, there were, there were three questions really very quickly. And uh, I'm sorry to cut you off. But uh, th if we ask these later, they won't make sense. How do you know what type of unrelated interest to choose? Do you run a questionnaire? Um, you know, it's just gut feel. <laughs> Um, you know, one thing in Facebook analytics that you have in the audience explorer, it, it will show you, um, related interests. So like people who like your page also like, but it also shows you unrelated interests. It's like mm. people who like your page are not likely to like these things. So typically the conventional wisdom has been to go with related interests. And I'm saying like, wait a minute, you know, why don't you target some of those unrelated interests and overlay them uh, and then work that into the copy. Uh, it's, it's, it's a novel strategy that is not, it's, it's not really gained much traction. Uh, mm -hmm. Like I, I don't see anyone reading, blogging about it or, 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 or talking about it on the speaker circuit. Uh, but I, I'm finding it's an incredible like way of, of, of getting, uh, you know, really shocking reactions out of people. Absolutely brilliant. Okay, I'll let you carry on. That was, that was the little cut in. Uh, no, that's, that's great. Um, so uh, number six, uh, Facebook ad hack, it's, it's called the Facebook web traffic bomb. Okay, so what's a Facebook web traffic bomb? Uh, well, it's basically a web traffic bomb. Okay, so there, there's a crazy hack to get on the New York Times bestsellers uh, book review list. Uh, Jason, do you, know what, do you know what it is? Yeah, I know what it is. I've never been on it, but you have, yeah? Yeah, it's so stupid easy. All you do is you just buy a lot of your own books, like all at once, you know, from from a few different accounts, and and just like buy five thousand copies of your book uh, from like you know thirty different people, uh, and and, and um, what will happen is that like that'll create a spike, okay, in in, in sales, and um, then then it'll show up in the in the bestseller list, okay, and and um, then what will happen is that because a lot of people read the New York Times bestseller list they'll they'll see the new book on the list and they'll say like hmm what is this new book <laughs> and so that'll kind of like catalyze sort of an, an initial uh interest in your book that, that based on the activity that you 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 created yourself okay uh and so um sites like hacker news or medium or linkedin pulse or reddit these are all sites that work kind of the same way where they kind of highlight stuff to, to their big audience based on, you know, what's popular to, uh, right this moment, you, you follow? Um, and so the algorithms are actually pretty stupid. Um, I've, you know, 
tried mucking around with all of them and I can kind of explain to you how these work. Um, so medium in particular is, is, is pretty dumb. Uh, the, this, this article multitasking is killing your brain. It got over a million views, uh, 9,012 likes. Um, it was like the most popular article on medium for like, you know, a week. Um, and, and, um, you know, it catapulted me to be the number eight most popular author on Medium, just behind like I don't know Hillary Clinton and and Ev Williams, who's like the founder of of Medium and and um, and Twitter as well. So um, so so how 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 the heck is that possible? Um, and how do you generate all these gazillions of, of page views on these platforms? Well, it's through the web traffic bomb. So. All those systems like Medium, it's kind of a content recommendation engine. Okay, so, so it's kind of recommending what content uh, t that their users should read. And how does it do that? Well, it's not, it's not by human, you know, they don't employ editors to read every article. You know what I mean? Like they're using they're using user engagement signals. They're looking for to see what's popular. Like are a lot of people reading this article and if so that probably means it's very interesting and that we should send it out to to more people in their email uh, the kind of recommended reading digest or that we could kind of surface these these stories in the in the medium uh, app like the 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 reader uh and so uh if that's how how those systems work then it's kind of would make sense to send signal to those platforms to kind of have them take notice of the content that you're looking to 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 promote, and so if that's the case, um, you can use Facebook for this. Um, you can use Facebook as a web traffic bomb to direct enormous amounts of traffic from different IP addresses, uh, you know, to specific pieces of content on certain platforms, so that those platforms will you know really think that that piece of content is super super interesting. Now, because I don't want to waste your money, um, you know, you don't you don't have to buy the most expensive $200 CPM audiences. You can choose the cheapest audiences because all we're trying to do here is send signal to those platforms to say that people are interested in this story. So you can buy the cheapest clicks available. Like it can be, you know, you know, previously like the inverted unicorn, we were being very picky and like kind of come out with these crazy like combinations. Like this is kind of the opposite. I'm saying like, just pick anything like, you know, worldwide, uh, you, you know, I mean, it's like, go with a cheaper, cheaper placements like audience network. And what happens when you do this is you end up generating a lot of traffic uh, for very, very cheap. So this is saying like, oh, well, you got 800 clicks for like one penny per click. So that, that's that's pretty good. Um, of course, it's from places that you know aren't that competitive in terms of the the, the ad prices. Uh, so uh, so yeah. And what happens is that then those clicks they get delivered. You know, Facebook is so enormous so that you know they, Facebook can fill this order in in, in ten seconds. <laughs> you know, all these people are clicking on the article. You know, going to Medium, uh, and then the Medium algorithms just go crazy and start surfacing that content to other people. Um, I've been able to make this work on, on on every of these platforms. Here's an example of of an article called "Excel Tricks to Make You a Power User." Okay, uh, so this is uh, you know 1,564 upvotes. Uh, it got to the front page of Life Hacks, which is one of the top 10 most popular subreddits, uh, and it got uh, 500,000 views in about four hours. How did I do this? Uh, I just used the web traffic bomb targeting people who like Excel and people who also like Reddit because in the Reddit uh, algorithm, uh, it's you need upvotes. So, so I thought that by targeting my people who also like Reddit, it was likely that uh, that they would have a Reddit account so that they, so that they could upvote the uh, the story. Okay, so like it doesn't work a hundred percent of the time. Okay, but. Um, uh, what's the probability of you going hot on, on, on one of the top three, you know, subreddits on, on Reddit? It's like 0%. Okay. Uh, but, but for me, I can make it work like one every, you know, 10 tries or something like this. You, you see what I'm saying? So it's not a guarantee, uh, but it like dramatically increases your chances by, by, um, it's, it's like some chemical reactions need like a, like a catalyst, like a little spark to, to get the ball rolling. Uh, and and, and that, that's what I'm saying. Like, so if this story wasn't interesting, if, if, if it was a stupid story, then it would not have worked. But if it was a really interesting story that did really well in other places, uh, then why not just spend a few dollars to, to light a little spark so that it'll also do well in other places? So that's, that's kind of my idea here. 
so that's the the web traffic bomb. Any questions on that one? Uh, yeah, no, I, I absolutely love that. What I love about it is it's so completely contra contradictory. The first one, one is saying, uh, target incredibly specifically, incredibly specifically. The other is saying, let's start a spark with any kind of person, but we start that spark and that spark will ignite the platform that you're using. And that's brilliant. Yeah, it's, a, <laughs> it's a, you, you just gotta you just gotta tell Facebook exactly what you want it to do, and and um, and and uh, all of these are valid use cases. Uh, just people don't have the imagination to try these things out. Um, so, um, but but you do because you you are on this on, on this webinar, and and uh, I hope you can try these out yourself. Um, the 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 um, the the Russian ad targeting method. So this is a really interesting um, kind of thing uh, that the the Russians were were meddling around in in different elections using the Facebook platform. And I think they they really have some really clever, um, you know, online advertisers there. Um, I'm not I'm not uh, advocating for like, you know, destruction of like society and all this stuff. Like I don't want you to do horrible things with, with your Facebook ad campaigns. But nevertheless, um, it's worth examining kind of how they did what they did. All right. And so to do this, I created a fake news website of my own. So this website, it's like a, a $9 a year Wix website. It's like a Wix is like a free, like a cheap website hosting company. And I made my own fake news company called Citizens News Networks. Okay. And if you look at that logo, it's actually the CNN logo backwards. Uh, <laughs> so this is totally fake. Okay. Uh, the, no, seriously, I, I created a fake news website. No, no, uh, I saw the slide deck, but I didn't say that. And now it's just like, can you chuckle? Uh, yeah, uh, and and then uh, I filled <laughs> I filled my fake news website with fake articles. I did not write this article. There's actually, you know, there's actually websites out there that have the most famous fake news stories. I just copied some of my favorite ones and put it onto my fake news website. Okay, uh, this one was called Donald Trump protester speaks out. I was paid thirty five hundred dollars to protest Trump's rally. Okay, <laughs> this is like uh, it's a, it was a very famous fake news. Okay. Uh, then I created a fake Facebook page called Citizens News Networks. Okay, it's fake. Uh, I, I uh, you know, uh, created a, a fake Facebook ads account to promote the fake news on my fake news website. And I spent about fifty dollars, uh, you know, targeting you know swing states like Pennsylvania, etc., to to um, to Republicans, to to um, conservatives, not just you know, regular conservatives, but like ultra conservatives, like people who are like, you know, NRA and, you know, like, you know, likely to engage with, with conservative pol political content, et cetera, et cetera. So, so like, uh, I, I tried to find ultra right wing people who I thought would eat up this story uh, because they have this big chip on their shoulder saying like, uh, you know, these protests are full of fake paid actors or stuff like, you know, like it kind of validates kind of their pre existing biases. And, and sure enough, I spent a few dollars um, promoting the post, and and the and and the the notification screen just lit up. Um, you know, within seconds, like everybody was like clicking on it and sharing on it, and and, and they were all uh, you know talking about it and resharing it. So 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 for fifty dollars, um, I don't like to spend a lot of money on Facebook ads. I like like I, I like to kind of I'm cheap. Okay, so uh, so so for fifty dollars, it I got forty two likes. 27 shares, 20 comments, <laughs> 30 people liked the page. <laughs> like they want to get more updates from my fake news page. Um, and, and and I got 2000 website clicks to, to the article. Okay. And that's, that's, that's amazing. That's for, for $50. Again, how is that possible? It's because of how this crazy algorithm works. It likes to surface the stuff that has a lot of engagement. Okay. And the question is like, how is this possible? Um, well, there's two things going on that the Russians are using. So the first thing that they did was that they would create these kind of funny stories like this that would just get, you know, kind of stir the pot and get people all riled up. Uh, and then they would target people who who held those kind of pre-existing biases. But the, the really crazy thing that the Russians did uh, was that they also targeted the opposite ideological extreme. So... They weren't just trying to find supporters of an idea, okay? They were trying to create a fight, okay? They were trying to stir up, like, uh, they were trying to eliminate the moderates. So they would target, like, you know, they would find divisive issues like abortion, and they would target kind of people who are both, you know, 
fervently for and against abortion. Okay, uh, and so what happens is, uh, is is it's it's like this is like a powder keg. Like if you're just uh, you're starting a a food fight. Okay, and you know you don't have to go with the most divisive social issues, but I wanted to to test out this idea. Uh, you know, I like to try them out on different platforms, not just Facebook, uh, because Facebook is so easy to manipulate. Um, you know, I, I tried this out on, on LinkedIn. Okay. And so I took an article, it said, you know, working moms raise more successful daughters and more empathetic sons, according to a Harvard study. Okay. So I kind of, you know, tried to post this and it got 10,700 likes, you know, 1500 shares, 390 comments, uh, 695 sorry, 65,000 views. So that's incredible. Usually when you do a LinkedIn Pulse, Pulse article, it gets like 100 views, okay? Mm -hmm. This is this is like 65,000 views, okay? And so how how did how did I do it? It's the comments, okay? Uh, the, the LinkedIn Pulse algorithm optimizes for comments and comment replies, okay? Uh, so um, basically to generate those comments, I, I use the Russian ad hack method of promoting this article to people who are going to love this article and people who are going to hate this article. So who's going to love an article saying that working moms raise more successful daughters and sons? Well, it's going to be working mothers, like people who are like, you know, executive chief, chief executive officer who are women uh, and have, and have children. Okay. So the, these people are just, they're just so they feel so guilty going to work and leaving their child at daycare or you know with a nanny and when they see an article saying like no 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 you don't have to feel bad your 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 children are going to be more successful they they want to validate their life choices they want to say see that's why I'm a working mom and that's why uh, you know I'm a CEO uh, and then they hit the like button and they comment you know something to, to affirm their own personal choices okay uh, so, so you, you target the people who's, who's gonna eat this stuff up but you also target the people who are, who are gonna who are gonna hate this okay like who's gonna hate this this article it's gonna be the the stay-at-home moms okay like the mommy CEOs and the the mommy housewife uh, the full-time mommies why because Raising children is the hardest job in the world. Okay, like they 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 hate that word, quote unquote, working mothers. It, it implies like that they're not working when it's actually the hardest job in the world. Trust me, I have two boys, you know, one and five. It's the hardest job ever. Uh, it's the most rewarding and most important job. So, by targeting this audience simultaneously to people who both strongly were predisposed to, to agreeing and disagreeing with the content. It sparked you know, a very lively discussion, 200, 390 comments. And, th and that is how this article, you know, generated that, that kind of response. Um, which, and, which is, sorry for me to cut in there. I mean, the third point then we've got uh, isolating incredibly niche markets of mixed interest. We've got, hit it as big as you can to hit that top spot even if it's only for one day and then we've got create engagement whatever that engagement is they'll sell you the ads cheaper that's right and and to do that you target the ideological extremes and, and eliminate okay. the center now Super duper. you don't have to this is not the russians use this to create social divisions within society okay um but in marketing there's plenty of cases where like some people are really like for the keto diet, but other people are for the paleo diet, you know? Mm -hmm. So like if, if you're selling the paleo diet stuff, what I'm saying is like, m maybe target people who like the keto diet, <laughs> you know, because they're gonna have fervent, you know, beliefs, um, you know, saying that this other this other diet is crap. Um, and, 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 and what I'm saying is that, that that's okay. Uh, you know, yeah. like, so it's not about, you know, making people hate each other, but rather uh, finding kind of where there's, you know, agree to disagree things and, and people who feel strongly about this. And, and, and I, I think that exists in every business. Yeah. So engagement, we're looking at engagement. Uh, yeah, if, if, if you're only targeting the, the true believers, there's nowhere to go in the comments. Yeah. You know what the comments are going to say? It's going to say, yes, it's going to say, yeah, uh, good job. Or I agree. And then, and then like, there's no discussion. And, and all, a lot of these platforms, particularly LinkedIn is, is uh, optimizing for comment replies. You see what I'm saying? Brilliant. Yeah, no, I get it. Wonderful. So my number four uh, idea here is is uh, remarketing only. Okay, so previously, uh, you know, you would spend money on on Facebook ads uh, to do regular campaigns, and then you'd also spend money on remarketing campaigns. But 
because the Facebook ad prices are so crazy in 2020, uh, I'm just saying just forget about regular ads and only do uh, remarketing ads only because remarketing ads aren't just a little bit better than Facebook regular ads. They're like, you know, 10 times better. Okay. So, you know, just to give you an example, if I run the same ad, the same bids, the same budgets, you know, but, but targeting two people who visited my website and people who did not visit my website before. Okay. Do you know what the difference is? It's enormous. People who have brand affinity and who've heard of me before are two to three times more likely to click on my ad. They're also two to three times more likely to, to convert and sign up for whatever it is you're selling. Okay. So if you multiply through it, the, 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 the CPCs are also cheaper because the higher engagement is, is, is lower CPC. So um, if you multiply through, you know, three times more likely to click, three times more likely to convert and half the cost per click, um, what you'll find is that even though you might spend $100 on ads and only, you know, 10% 10, 10 of that is, is to, uh, uh, to remarketing typically, 70% uh, of the conversions are actually, if you segment it out, it's coming from the remarketing audience. So that tiny little spend of 10% is generating like 70% of the value, okay? Alternatively, 90% of your spend is, is, is just really not that effective. It's only generating like a very small fraction of your, of your conversions. And I've seen this in, in, in hundreds and thousands of accounts over the last few years. Um, and so, you know, the remarketing is really, really interesting in that it triples your click-through rates. It, it, you know, cuts your CPCs in half, it triples conversion rates. The problem is that it cuts impression volume by 10 X. Okay. So like, uh, generally it's the case that w whatever you're trying to sell, there's more people who haven't heard of you than have heard of you, right? Because otherwise, why are you trying to sell it? You know, if everyone's heard of you, then, then there's no need to do marketing. Um, so mar remarketing is, is like running a sporting team, like a football team with only defense and no offense. You know, that, it's not a really a great strategy if, if you're only targeting the people who, who, who already love you, okay? Because there's so many other people who don't even know who you are. Um, so what do we do in this situation? The, the solution is like, we're gonna make that, amount of people who are familiar with your brand significantly bigger, like a hundred or a thousand times bigger, but we're not going to do it in Facebook. You used to be able to do this in Facebook when Facebook ads were cheaper, but now it's so expensive on Facebook. We're only going to use Facebook ads for lower funnel conversion. So like converting the remarketing people. And we're going to take all that money that you used to spend on, on Facebook ads that were just pr producing nothing. And now is a total waste of money. Uh, we're going to divert that budget to other crazy audience growth and affinity creation campaigns that are not Facebook ads, such as uh, you know radio broadcasts or PR stunts or TV stunts, you know just crazy stuff. Um, you know, like those those hacks that I was showing you earlier about the web traffic bomb or the inverted uni unicorn or or, or um, you know like. Those are like $50, like the Russian method. Those are like $50 ad spends that, that generate enormous uh, 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 kind of uh, affinity. Like, like people hear about me through these crazy stunts. Maybe that's how you've heard of me, uh, you know, to, 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 to join me today. Um, and what I'm saying is like, just stop wasting the money on Facebook ads, you know, spend it somewhere else to create the initial affinity. And I can give you a couple examples. Uh, so here's a couple examples of generating mad hits for, for free or very cheap. Um, LinkedIn, again, there's this thing called broetry where if you can write these stupid double spaced poems about work and life on LinkedIn, people just eat this stuff up. Uh, so this is a stupid, you know, 300 character post uh, that says, uh, you know, uh, about how many rejections I got. Uh, and, and, and basically it took me 50 minutes to write because it's, they only allow for 300 characters. Uh, and uh, it, it generated 850,000 views, as you can see there, but it also generated 25,000 website visitors because, you know, around, you know, three to 5% of people actually click through uh, to your profile and check out your website to see who wrote this. So guys, how does marketing really work? Uh, well, it's a three-step process. The first step is you do something crazy, like some kind of a kooky PR stunt, you know, that that kind of, you know, gets people to notice you in the first place. If you think about like, you know, who's famous in marketing, it's like Rand Fishkin. Well, what did he do? Well, he was like really popular on YouTube. Like, so you start some some kind of a thing that uh, that kind of just gets gets your 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 name or your business out there, okay? Then step two, bias formation. So what happens is people aren't gonna buy from you right away, but 
at the back of their mind, they start to, to remember you. And so later, step three, when they want to buy whatever it is they're hoping that, that you're selling, they're going to remember you and they're going to be much more likely to, to buy from you uh, than, than had they not heard of you before. And so what I'm saying is step one and step two, don't do that on Facebook. Just just do crazy you know, leverage stunts and then, then leverage Facebook ads for harvesting of demand. Um, in, just to cut in very quickly, Mariano Navas says, how is, uh, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you've just answered her question or his question, how this applies to promoting actual products and services. Uh, how can we actually get attention and go viral that's fine but how can we make it sell and the answer is remarketing you get attention you get people then you remarket and that was that exactly because remarketing am i right or am i wrong you, you got it it's because once you remarket it, it's selling to to uninitiated people who haven't heard of you is, is a suicide mission you Sorry. need to, to and and you need to generate that initial affinity and you have to do it on the cheap you have you can't be thinking like buying that that interest like through facebook ads not in 2019 it's just too expensive uh you, you Mario, gotta, this question was about five and six and it's saying we grab attention get them on the site then we remarket with this number four you got it you got it number three oh, reciprocal oh, sorry. Oh, sorry excuse me i'm sorry to interrupt uh, number three, reciprocal remarketing. So another idea here, uh, Jason, is if we can um, if we can just sell other people's products and services. Okay, so like you're you're probably wondering like, wait, Facebook ads are hard enough selling my own products, but you want me to sell other people's products? And that absolutely yes, emphatically yes. Uh, so there's a guy named Neil Patel. He's kind of a genius. Uh, we're, we're kind of known for growth hacking and this kind of stuff. Um, we're, we have a lot of similarities. Like we both have pages with lots of fans and we're both kind of growth hackers and we're not competitive in any in any way he sells services and i sell software um and so um he has a huge audience that has affinity with him and i have, I have you know not as big an, as an audience but a decent sized audience uh, that has affinity affinity towards me and my uh products and so if you can agree to like you know, I'll spend ten thousand dollars advertising your products if you spend ten thousand advertising my products. Then, effectively, what you're doing is you're doubling the size of those kind of people who are familiar with with, with your with your brand because um, you know by having that other person talk about your stuff, uh, you know, they're more going to be more receptive to that message. And by me talking about someone else's stuff, my my audience is going to be more receptive to that message. So you're going to capture kind of the magical elements of, of remarketing, which is higher click-through rates and higher conversion rates, uh, but also, uh, you know, casting a wider net, you see what I'm saying? So this is kind of like a paid version of influencer marketing, uh, you know, where, you know, you pay a person like, you know, uh, a few thousand dollars to, to post something on their social media feed. Uh, this is the, you can do the same thing in Facebook ads where you just, you know, do a barter, you know, where you find a non-competitive, uh, you know, company and, and, and just kind of do a, an ad swap. Okay. Um, my number two ad hack here, we're kind of running out of time, it's Facebook Messenger ads. Uh, so most of the ads that you spend on Facebook are traffic engagement and conversion ads, but my favorite one by far is uh, it's it's these messages, the, the messaging, uh, click to message ads. Uh, and so it's kind of like an ad, but when you click on this button, you get everyone's uh, messaging permission. So you get all their contact information and, and the ability to send broadcast messages to them uh, on Facebook Messenger. Uh, and this is pretty interesting because you can send them all sorts of messages like instead of sending them to, to a static web page you can send them into a survey or you can you can get them to sign up for something or you can send them drip campaigns but all through messaging all right uh and so um it's, it's way more interactive than than um uh than than conventional landing pages because you can do segmentation you can ask them like are you an in-house advertiser or an in-house or an agency and based on how they ask answer those questions you can send them down different funnels uh, and, and once you send them down these different funnels, you can make note of who said that they were like an agency or an advertiser so that you can customize the content uh, to be relevant to, to their, to their needs. Uh, so this is like an, you know, Hey, Larry, we're, you know, we're doing a specific event just for marketing agency people. And this gets very, very high response rates. Um, and so, you know, messaging, if you're not using it yet, you're, I think you're crazy because it's the best deal on, on Facebook ads. Uh, and and um, just wanted to give you a couple tips on how I use them. Uh, one of them is I use uh, kind of this active listening psychological person uh, principle where it's like if you ask them a question, 
uh, and uh, you know, hey, I, you know, are you a novice, a fan, or an expert? If they say that they're a novice, you should reflect that back in the conversation. It's like, okay, oh, great news. We've got a, a chatbot training program specifically for new, you know, people who are new to the field and looking for a guided path. Like, I'm still selling the same software. Okay, it's the same video course, but you know, I'm just trying to reflect back their their identity, and people like that because it feels like they're being listened to uh, instead of trying to ram everyone through the same funnel here I'm I'm, I'm kind of customizing it based on their their identity uh, another thing you can do it and, and these are these are tactics used by like salespeople um, you, you can use these in messaging uh, it, it's um, you can uh, offer a concession so you start off by saying uh, you know how much is the the chatbot training course it's hundred ninety nine dollars what do you think and there's two buttons that says, you know, too expensive or great, I'm in. 99.999% of people say too expensive. And then, then you can walk your walk it back and say, you know, you, I totally agree it's too expensive. Uh, how about, uh, you know, $9? I'll give you a, um, you know, a 94% discount code. So, like, if, if people feel like, you know, they're anchoring on this high price and now they got this message saying, like, I'll give you a 94% discount, you know, this absolutely impacts uh, conversions. And so how do you do these Facebook Messenger ads? So this is kind of... Mobile Monkey. This is the uh, world's fastest growing, uh, you know, messaging uh, platform for marketers, uh, and and you can visually create these kind of dialogues that will interact with people. It's kind of like how you use like you know I don't know Unbounce or something to to create landing pages. Well, you could use Mobile Monkey to create these interactive um, messaging dialogues to 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 chat with with people, uh, and it, it's very simple. Uh, so it's Mobile Monkey. Um, here's an example of a, of an ad that I ran for my. Uh, Facebook advertising summit earlier this year. Uh, you can see here, it looks like a regular newsfeed ad, but it says uh, send message. And if you look on the right side, here's kind of a video of, of what that looks like. It just says like, hey, are you running Facebook ads? He says, yes, I am. And, it, and that, now it's see how it's saying, ask, asking like, are you an agency or a consultant or an in-house marketer? And, and depending how they answer, we're kind of coming up with different benefits. And we're also gonna send them to the correct landing page. So we're we're still sending people to to a um, a landing page, but we've kind of custom, we've already captured all their information, received messaging permissions, so I can do drip campaigns and all this stuff, uh, and and uh, and then sending them to the correct landing page that that speaks their language. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. But the, the the really interesting thing is is just the results. So I'm able to get you know signups for three to five dollars. Okay, uh, typically if you try to drive people into a webinar for you know on Facebook ads, it's going to be you know, at least in the United States, it's going to be three, four, five hundred dollars per lead. So this is way better uh, in terms of cost per result. And I haven't seen prices this low since, you know, s you know, five or six years ago. After the, they cl click on the button, you get their contact information. You can segment the users into different custom audiences. You can uh, upload those custom audiences to, to, to Facebook ads as, as uh, custom audiences to, to run remarketing ads. Um, and, and basically, it's a slightly different funnel. You get the contact and messaging permissions initially and upfront when they click on the ad. Uh, and then you kind of qualify the, the ad, the, the, the user by asking different questions. You can send them to different landing pages. Um, but if they don't sign up, you can still re-engage with them through through Messenger. Uh, so that's, that's pretty interesting. The last thing I want to show you today is just my Facebook ad hack of uh, Messenger post guard, like so they're, they're uh, uh, comment guards. So uh, this is this is just a really cool way of, of generating comments uh, and turning those comments into leads and, and emails for your for your business. So this is just like I posted a stupid riddle on my on my uh, post here on my on my page. It says the battle of the English of the math. One rabbit saw six elephants while going to the river. Every elephant saw two monkeys, etc. So how many animals are going to the river? Mm -hmm. And it just says post your guess in the comments. I'll auto respond to you privately through Messenger. Uh, you know, and give you the answer as well as an explanation. So this generated 57 comments and I converted every one of them into a messenger subscriber. How do you do this? Of course, you just use a tool like Mobile Monkey, which is the Facebook, uh, has a Facebook messaging support. Uh, and you just create kind of answers to send to users, uh, you know, after they comment. And, uh, and you just you know, specify what posts you, know, you want to send the content to. And, uh, and, and it's very simple to, to set it up. And, and there's also sorts of different ways you can use this um, in, in Facebook. Um, here's an example of a realtor saying, you know, this house was listed at $100,000. Can you guess what we sold it for? Enter your guess, and I'll send you the answer and a market guide. 
Uh, and so if the user posts on this, this comment says, I think it was, you know, uh, you know, $90,000, you know, they're going to receive a private message in messenger that has the correct answer as well as a PDF file with a housing report. Okay. So this really simple way and you can boost these, these things using, you know, boost, boost posts, uh, and you end up generating an enormous number of leads at very, very cheap. Again, this is just a, a feature in mobile monkey. Um, so guys, the future of, of, of Facebook is messaging. Uh, it's not the newsfeed. The newsfeed usage is actually in decline. Um, the open rates of messaging are substantially higher than than you know Facebook ads or or email marketing. And so, if you haven't, um, you know, people already overwhelmingly prefer doing messaging than emailing, in terms of their communication preferences. And um, you know, a lot of new business APIs are coming out in, in in next year. So, might as well jump on this bandwagon, including uh, WhatsApp. So, guys, let's just wrap it up today. Um, what does it all mean? We've been you know, thank you for joining me on this epic journey from donkey land to unicorn land, wherein we dis we discussed my favorite ad hacks to try in 2020. Um, you might think that there was kind of a random list of, of, of hacks, but actually there was an organization to those hacks. Uh, if you think about what we discussed, I started our discussion at the very top of the funnel. So I was trying to describe ways that you could have growth at the top of the funnel by employing Facebook ads to you know, get a lot of enormous number of people into your funnel without spending money. We talked about, you know, inverted unicorn, Facebook ad traffic rocket, the Russian ad hacks. These are all crazy loopholes that you can exploit that are legal um, to, to dramatically expand the reach uh, of people to, to seeing your content and your, and your ads. Uh, we then went moved to the middle of the funnel where I, where I suggested it's time to dump non-remarketing ads and only go remarketing only. Uh, and we also talked about kind of reciprocal fan targeting as another way of expanding your audiences so that you can receive the benefits of remarketing without you know, having to spend a ton of money. And lastly, we moved to, to the lower you know, bottom of funnel where we talked about two of my favorite ad units that are the most conversion friendly ad units out there. It's the Facebook uh, Messenger ads, as well as the Boosted Common Guards, which um, you know, have a really cool feature that lets you, you know, receive messaging permissions, like as soon as they engage with your content. Uh, and then, and, and that's like a really interesting way of, of, of converting substantially more uh, of, of these people. So, so that's, that's, uh, that's our story today. Uh, thank you, SEM Rush and Jason for hosting me. Uh, I want to make sure that you get the bonus materials because I know, um, you know, you want to have, a great year next year. So get go to bit.ly slash SEMrush dash Larry to get the get the materials. And uh, you know, any any last questions, Jason? No, no, no. I thought that was absolutely brilliant. I mean, I was kind of I caught on about halfway through about the idea of building an audience, targeting them, and then you nailed it at the end with really knowing them, getting the messenger thing going. And I was thinking about it this afternoon. I use Messenger an awful lot. So I'm I'm a big fan now of that idea of messenger. I'm going to be looking into that. Uh, I think we've gone around everything. The questions we've had from the audience were absolutely brilliant. Your explanation and that conclusion were absolutely perfect. Well, thank you guys. Um, I just want to wish you a happy holidays and and the best of luck with your marketing campaigns next year. And um, thanks again, SEM Rush and Jason for hosting me. Check out uh, Mobile Monkey at mobilemonkey.com for for messaging software and 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 the like. And uh, we'll, we'll catch you later. Okay. Well, yeah, thank you, Larry. I, I was absolutely stunned by that. I'm going to be using all that next year. And thank you for coming along. See you next year, I hope. For more right. Th thanks, guys. Have a good day. Bye. Bye-bye.